Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from the final round of the Girls Junior uh, World Championship 2023. Uh, it is Belislava Krasteva of uh, Bulgaria versus Candela Bel and Francisco Guecamburu of Argentina. And uh, both of them uh, have reached uh, this point in the championship without losing a single game, which is absolutely incredible. And uh, uh, although you might expect uh, a calm game because this is board one, this is the final round, it is anything but that because Belislava is leading by a full point. So in order for Candela to actually win the world title uh, she has to defeat the Belislava with the black pieces and this is just uh, 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 an incredible top level game so let's check it out uh, Belislava has the white pieces and she opens with pawn to d4 both of them are I think uh, 17 years old um, I think Candela just uh, uh, I think uh, like a month ago or something um, uh, t turned 17 and Belislava is 17 or 18 uh, not really sure and um, uh, you have to be under 20 to participate in this championship although you have some very very strong young players like Miao Yulu uh, who is 13 uh, but um, you know uh, you've seen what happened in the previous game so let's uh, see what happens here d4 we have knight to f6 c4 uh, and now pawn to c5 as she needs a win Candela goes for the uh, Benoni defense and how do you react to this of course uh, if you if your opponent is banking everything on the Benoni defense, you know that they are very well prepared for d5. So uh, instead, uh, Belislava goes for the anti-Benoni. She transposes into the English, and this is sort of the anti-Benoni line. Knight of three, c captures, knight captures, and now uh, standard moves here are e5, kicking away the knight, e6, maybe knight to c6, but she goes for pawn to b6. It's a fairly rare move, uh, but it has been played before. For example, in 2010, uh, Magnus Carlsen played it against Jon Ludwig Hammer and Magnus lost the game. So yeah, you have to, you know, uh, ver be very, very careful here going for the development of the light square bishop so early on in the game. Uh, knight to c3 and now bishop to b7. We have pawn to f3, limiting the power of the uh, light square bishop and now pawn to e, uh, sorry, e6 first and pawn to e4, d6 and bishop to e2. So we have pawn to a6. Uh, and now, okay, you could castle, but here we have bishop to e3, and now knight b to d7. We have castles and bishop to e7, so both of them just playing nice developing moves. We have rook to c1, uh, and castles. We have pa uh, pawn to a3, uh, and here again, it's a very well-known position, uh, been reached many times. For example, uh, Yanni Pomni, she had this position against Gata Kamsky in the uh, Russian team championship for men in 2015. And uh, that game ended in a draw, uh, where Kamsky uh, continued with rook to c8, rook to c8 being the top engine move even today. Uh, but here uh, we have queen to c7. She goes for a bit of a different approach. Um, uh, Candela wants to play rook to c8 and then remaneuver the queen over to b8. So okay, pawn to b4, uh, always the strongest move. We have rook a to c8 and queen to b3 now. Uh, and now rook f to e8, and it is now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. So the rook on e8, although it looks a bit weird, uh, what is it even doing there? Maybe you thought maybe rook to d8, but it's actually very well placed uh, here, uh, uh, as if a uh, central breakthrough occurs, uh, the e file might open up, and then look at those bishops on the e file. So the rook is very well placed here. Uh, you could also put the knight on f8 now and go to g6. You could also play bishop to f8 if needed to add additional support to the king. So it's a very nice move. We have rook f to d1, and now queen to b8, sort of finishing development here. King to h1, uh, and now we have pawn to h5. With king to h1, uh, this diagonal now becomes very important, uh, and Candela goes for pawn to h5. She wants to play pawn to h4, pawn to h3, and open up the white king's position. We have bishop to f1, adding another defender here, and h4. Uh, queen to a2, and now comes knight to e5. Now, uh, you, you're probably wondering if, if h3 here is a good move. Uh, sure, uh, it can be played, but white can just block it with g3. She could also play g4, and she could also even capture queen. Queen to a2 might be uh, just signaling that that was her plan, because now she could place uh, the queen to g2, put the rook on g1, and go after the black king. But also queen to a2 kind of says, okay, I want to play queen to f2, put pressure on this diagonal, put pressure on b6, go knight a4, really put pressure on that b6 pawn. So also one of the reasons why the queen is on a2. But uh, there is no need to rush things as, uh, I mean, you, you have to win with black if you want to become world champion. So, uh, you know, better just to build up the tension. We have knight to e5, and now Belislava goes for knight to a4, uh, preparing to put more pressure on that uh, b6 pawn. Uh, and now bishop to d8 defending it. 
Now uh, you could also defend it with bishop to a8, just uh, so the queen defends, but it's better for uh, a minor piece to defend the pawn. Uh, and now bishop to g5. Now this is a very problematic move as it attacks the h4 pawn, and it also def uh, attacks the knight. Now you might uh, have some ideas of bishop captures, and then the bishop will not be able to capture uh, since you're going to pick up the pawn here. So maybe uh, Candela will have to mess up her pawn structure in front of the king. So while well, you could play something like knight f to d7, so the bishop defends and attacks, and let's say the uh, uh, this gets traded off and now the knight defends the b pawn uh Candela says that now it's time to strike she plays pawn to h3 and okay how do you how do you deal with this uh one way is to play g captures on h3 and we're going to show it because it's actually a lot of fun now uh the the whole position explodes pawn to b5 attacks the knight here c captures on b5 a captures rook captures on c8 queen captures and now bishop captures on b5 attacking the rook here but now look at this knight captures on e4 and now what do you play of course you have to you have to take the rook uh, or you have to take the bishop or you have to take the knight what do you play here uh, believe it or not, the uh, best move is bishop captures on d8. And now the idea was after bishop captures, queen captures, now f captures on e4, and bishop captures on e4. And you would get this position uh, where uh, Belislav would be up a piece, but Kandela would have a very, very strong attack against the white king. The uh, white king's defenses have been completely uh, d destroyed. You have a knight and bishop in the attack. Uh, if you find a way to get your rook and queen into the attack, could be very nasty. On the other hand, if she defends well, uh, then her uh, two connected pass points on the queen side should be enough to decide the game so it's extremely double-edged uh she's not interested in that she goes for bishop captures on f6 instead trying to win the pawn on b6 bishop captures and now knight captures on b6 so she wins a pawn uh, attacks the rook here rook c to d8 and now knight back to a4 so uh what's the price of the pawn well you will get uh, uh on the attacking uh, or rather on the defending side of this game h captures on g2 with check bishop captures and now again you don't have to rush anything knight to g6 preparing to get the knight into the game uh, queen to f2, it's very important to uh, uh, include the queen into defense, uh, or, or also you need to guard the g3 and h4 uh, squares, bishop to e5, and now pawn to h3. We have knight to e2 now, uh, uh, sorry, queen to c7 first. Uh, here, Candela wants to get her queen into the game, and um, it'd be great if you could get your queen all the way here. Plus, you had to play h3 as, uh, okay, the queen bishop battery here, if um, d5 is played, would really uh, make problems for, for the white king. So, queen c7, uh, we have knight to e2, and now knight to f4, offering a trade of knights, uh, which Veloslava goes for. Knight captures, bishop captures, and now rook to c2. Uh, we have rook to f8, now preparing to open up the, uh, the, 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 the f file for the rook. And look at this bishop pair. This is absolutely magnificent. Uh, uh, so knight to b2, it's also time to bring this knight back into the game. Uh, pawn to f5 now, trying to open up the f file. Knight to d3 and f captures on e4. We have f captures on e4, even allowing some discoveries. Uh, luckily, uh, there, there aren't any. So pawn to e5 first. Now, when you first saw this position, I don't think you ever imagined uh, that the this pawn would march forward. Uh, everyone was expecting this pawn to march forward, uh, but now this pawn nicely defends the bishop here, and this bishop is just a monster. So queen to e2, and now we have bishop to h6. Now preparing to uh, bring the rooks over to the f file. Rook to g1, Belislava also wants to put pressure on the black king, and now bishop to c8, putting pressure on the h3 pawn. Pawn to c5, and now rook to f6, defending and also maybe preparing to double up here. Uh, c captures on d6, queen captures, and knight to c5. And this is now uh, such a dangerous position you, you would not believe now. Uh, here, bishop to f4 was played, which is uh, objectively the best move. But just to show you what uh, what kind of a wild position it is, let's say you play rook d to f8, you double up here, prepare to bring the queen to f2. Uh, rook to c3, preparing rook to g3. Now look at this, rook f2, queen to h5, and now even rook captures on g2. So you, you have to calculate all of this in order to, uh, to actually decide for that bishop to f4 move there. And now if rook captures on g2, you will play rook to f1 with check. And now you have two options, rook to g1 and king h2. If you go rook to g1, then just captures, captures, queen to d4 check. We'll pick up the rook here. Uh, but after the king moves, queen captures on c3, you will uh, face queen to e8 check, king to h7, and queen captures on c8 check. And now after queen to f3 check, it will be a draw. Even with the dark square bishop, there's just no way to... Uh, get it into the game. You king d1 and uh, okay. 
uh, if you allow bishop to f5 check it will be a draw and on the other hand after rook to f1 check if you don't block you can play king to h2 uh, but then comes bishop to f4 with check you have to block with this rook and now you're going to see a captures captures and the king is actually very very safe on g3 because again you are facing the same issues this uh queen uh queen queen, queen check um uh, repetition will uh, you know, prevent you from actually doing anything here. So while it is a very nice idea, uh, remember, she has to win this game in order to win the championship. So she goes for bishop to f4, the absolute strongest move. Uh, rook to c3 and now rook to h6, now piling up on that uh, poor h h3 pawn. And here we have rook to d3. And this is move 39. Uh, it's a most certainly a critical position. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what you would play here for black uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the strongest, uh, objectively strongest move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, congratulations on finding the practical strongest move, the one that uh, Candela played here. She played queen captures on d3, uh, and now uh, it's time to time to really calculate. And the only way to defend this is to take with the queen and give the queen back. Then you would see rook captures on d3, knight captures, bishop captures on h3, and now you're going to play knight captures on f4, e captures and bishop captures on h3, rook captures king g2, and rook captures on a3. And you have this position where you are down upon in a rook endgame, uh, but uh, you know with uh, with uh, perfect play, you will be able to defend this. It, I still, it will be black playing for the win here. However, after this uh, queen captures on d3 move, Belislav played knight captures on d3, and here uh, her position just uh, falls apart entirely. Uh, bishop captures on h3. Uh, so you can't really not capture, otherwise you're just going to face, you know, very, very nasty discoveries. So bishop captures on h3, rook captures on h3, king to g2, and now rook d captures on d3. And now, how do you play this? Okay, uh, queen and rook versus two rooks and the bishop, uh, white uh, uh, should be able to play this, but not with the white king being so wide in the open. So queen to a2 with check. King to h8 and now queen to b1, but now it is very, very simple to convert this. Rook to c3, just going, sorry, not rook to c3. Uh, rook to h2 check first, and after king to f1, now comes rook to c3. Threatening rook to c1 check to win the white queen, and you can't really move the white queen away, uh, away from the back rank, otherwise rook to c1 will be checkmate. So she played a4, trying to get some counterplay with a pass pawn on the queen side, but there is no way to do that. The rook c1 check, queen captures, bishop captures, uh, rook to g6 somehow trying to get back into the game, but now rook b2, putting the rook behind the pass pawn, uh, rook to b6, and now bishop to d2, attacking the b4 pawn, b5, a captures and b5, a captures and bishop to e3, and bishop to e3 is basically the final nail in the coffin. Uh, as now both the bishop and the rook control the b6 square, which is a dark square, and that means this pawn is never crossing it. So rook to b8 check was played, king to h7, now king e1, as you know, there, there, there's nothing better, and here pawn to g5, and he was in this position on move 53 that Beoslava Krasteva resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. You cannot push the pawn to b6, it's covered by the bishop and by the rook, uh, so you can move the rook and lose the pawn, uh, or you can just, you know, await a few more moves until you are checkmated. Also, the queening square is covered by the bishop, so there is there is literally zero counterplay here. So, uh, incredible stuff. Uh, like I said, both of them went into the final round without losing a single game the entire championship. And now, uh, Belislava, you know, this is this is like the dream scenario of the of uh, a, a world chess championship. Uh, you go into the final round being up a full point. You have the white pieces. Uh, but you know, it also uh, puts a lot of pressure. Uh, but okay, uh, Candela is the uh, was the favorite to win this, and maybe not to win this, but uh, she is the favorite as she's the second seed of the tournament. Uh, but Belislava already uh, drew the top seed, Karisa Yip, uh, so you know. Uh, anything can happen, but here uh, it was definitely Candela's day. Uh, she she chose the the perfect opening to play for the win. Uh, it's like Mikal Tal said, as uh, he was also um, uh, you know really big on on, on trying out this uh, asymmetrical openings like the Benoni, you know, avoiding the d4 d5 stuff. Uh, he always said that if you if you want to play for the win, you have to give your opponent some sort of a um, some sort of an objective positional advantage that can't really be converted, but it is considered an advantage. And then later on, you will use those uh, holes that your opponent missed to 
uh, take advantage of the position. Not in those exact words, of course, but something like that. Uh, so yeah, Candela uh, Bell and Francisco Guecamburu is the uh, girls uh, world junior championship under 20 years old. Uh, she's the, 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 the fourth uh, women's world champion from Argentina. And uh, I mean, what an event, what, what a spectacular final round, winning, the, winning the, the game and the championship with a queen sacrifice. I don't think you can, uh, you know, uh, you, you cannot uh, expect and want anything more than that. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and this short coverage of the Girls World uh, Junior Championship. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Jeff. And I would like to thank Robert Araton, D uh, Diraj Kumar, uh, Kate Ingram, and Bern uh, Bernard Domrani for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.